here this morning. Got several things going on today right off the bat, so I uh, want to go ahead and let you know what's going on. So this morning we will have our, uh, our deacon election. If you're a member of the church, they're going to go, go and pass around ballots for you. On this, you'll vote for uh, Frank and Joe. We have both of them coming on. We're wanting both of them to come on to the deacon board. Uh, so we, we've got both of them on the ballot. So just uh, uh, mark both of their names if you want both of them on there. But that's the, what we're going for today is to have both of them elected and voted on to the uh, deacon board today. So those ballots will be passed around in just a second to every car uh, uh, for every member. So every member will get a ballot. And then the second thing that we're going to be passing out this morning to you is we've got a survey that we want to pass out to you. And so the reopening committee met this week and we're looking at getting back into the church on the first Sunday in October. And we wanted to ask you a couple of questions. So when you get the survey, it's pretty simple. Um, it's asking you if you would be comfortable coming back into the church if we're wearing a mask, yes or no. And then there's a place for you to add any additional comments or anything else that you would like to let the reopening committee know about. And then whenever uh, they'll pass those out and then you'll have time to fill that out. You can, when the offering is taken up, just put it in the uh, offering box. So they'll be going to every car today with the offering box for you to put your ballot and your survey back into that. And so if you receive, if you fill out the survey today, we're also going to send this survey out electronically uh, next week. If you fill out the survey today and you get a text message asking you to fill out the survey, you don't have to worry about filling that survey out. Uh, a second time. Just go ahead and fill out the paper one we give today or the electronic one, just one. But they were wanting to get opinions on your thoughts on getting back into uh, the church. So two things being passed out this morning, deacon election for Joe and for Frank. This is, uh, we want both of them on the, uh, the deacon board. Uh, and then the survey uh, that's going out to about getting back into the church, uh, hopefully on uh, uh, the first Sunday in October. So while they're passing that out, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer uh, this morning. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer as we're getting ready to get started this morning. Father God, we come before you today, Lord. We know that there's a lot going on. Father, we know that this is uh, uh, just a busy time. But Father, we pray that you be with us this morning. Help us to just focus on you and concentrate on you. Help us to worship you and understand who you are today, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Open our minds, Lord, to you today, Lord. Open our ears to you that we may hear your voice as we come together to worship you this morning. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, while they're continuing to pass that out, I do have several other announcements for you today. Uh, mentioned the deacon election, the survey already. Uh, also, if you uh, are collecting uh, food for the... Uh, or food and items for the Baptist Children's Home, and you have those, if you want to pull up after the service, you can pull up right over here. Just kind of wave your hand, and someone will come and uh, get the box from uh, will get the box from you. So just pull up in front of the fellowship hall after the service. Kind of let us know that you have a box full of food, and we'll come and get it for you. We do have nine empty boxes, nine empty boxes. If we could get some people to maybe want to fill up a second or a third box, or if you haven't grabbed a box and would like to fill that up, if you'll go around back by the uh, by the basketball court, they'll be back there with those nine boxes after church. If you'd like to pick one up to fill that up. Uh, and then all boxes are due next Sunday. And everything that we collect, uh, every donation we get, that we go purchase, every bit of the food and the items that you give will go directly to the Baptist Children's Home uh, for them there. So uh, we appreciate everything that you've done. And if you'd like to uh, pick up another box, go right ahead with right after church. We will uh, have those available at the basketball court. Also, uh, the reopening committee the other night decided that uh, as we were talking and, and looking to go ahead and start opening back up for some small meetings and some things like that. So we'll be starting Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. We'll have our prayer meeting here at the church again in the fellowship hall. So Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. we'll start back with our prayer meeting um, every Tuesday. Uh, Please, when you come in, we'll have the, the chairs spread out, but wear a mask when you come in. Once you sit down, you can take your mask off because we'll have uh, at least six foot between the chairs. Uh, but please wear your mask as you come in. But 10 a.m. Tuesday morning, we'll be meeting back here at the church again to start our prayer meetings back uh, there. And so uh, be on the lookout for other announcements as we begin to hopefully start some other small, small things like this, getting back open into the, the church. Also, a uh, final announcement is uh, we, we're reading through the book of Colossians. And so this week our reading is Colossians chapter 3. 
Colossians chapter 3 is our reading this week. And so uh, there'll be videos up online for that, helping you understand kind of what you're reading as you go through Colossians chapter 3. So just a lot of things going on this morning. I know it's taken these guys quite a while to pass everything out. So uh, we're going to go ahead and go to prayer meeting or into our prayer request list while they continue to pass that out. And then um, as they pass those out, uh, while I'm doing my message, maybe they'll come back through and uh, pick everything up. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and look at our prayer list. Got several, several names for you. Got a lot of things going on this morning. A lot of names to give you. Continue to remember Roy uh, in prayer. Continue to remember him in prayer. He is home from the hospital. Had a chance to talk to him this week, and he was uh, uh, doing better. But let's continue to lift him up in prayer. Continue to remember Harold Craven in prayer. He has been on the list uh, the last few weeks. Let's continue to remember Harold Craven on your list. Uh, a few names that were mentioned this morning. Robin McDowell. Robin McDowell is have, uh, has cancer, having chemo treatments. Linda Layton is at Baptist uh, with, uh, with leukemia and, uh, and pneumonia. So let's remember Linda Layton. And then Meredith Craven Duell. Um, Meredith Craven Duell. Remember her um, had a brain tumor, had successful surgery, but there were some complications uh, with her hearing and some uh, paralysis uh, there. So let's continue to remember, ask that you put Meredith Craven Duell on your prayer list. So that was Meredith Craven Duell, Linda Layton, and Robin McDowell to add to the prayer list. Also continue to remember Roy, continue to remember Harold Craven in your prayers. A few other uh, things to remember, continue to remember our schools. We want to continue praying for all of our schools, every, uh, uh, all the students, all the, the teachers, the faculty, administration, everyone that's involved in the students going back to school right now. Let's just continue to pray uh, for them. Continue to pray for our country. Pray for those that are being affected by the, the fires out west. Continue to pray for uh, just everything that seems like it's going on in our country right now. Pray for our leaders, uh, that God will lead them and guide them in the, the way that they should go. And then finally, we've been praying for that one person. We've been praying for the spiritual needs of those around us. And let's continue to lift up that one person that you decided to pray for, that God laid upon your heart. Let's continue to pray for them this week. Continue to lift them up in prayer uh, each and every day. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And let's uh, lift up these names. Lots of needs today, just lots and lots of needs. So I ask that you join me today as we pray for these that are on the list. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we just come before you today. And Lord, we just want to take some time to come to you and ask, Lord, that you be with all these requests. Lord, so many on the list that just need a healing touch from you. And so, Father, as we come together this morning, we lift them up to you. Lord, as one, we bring these names to you, asking that you help in a way that only you can, Lord. Lord, that you lift these people up, Lord, and just give them healing as only you can heal today. And Father, we know that as we come together this morning, there are other needs, Lord, and other names that are going up to you today. Father, we ask that you be with each and every one of them. Father, we pray now that you continue to, to lift up and heal. Lord, we pray that you meet the spiritual needs of others. Lord, those that maybe have drifted away from you, Lord, that you'll bring them back. Father, you know the needs of each and every person, each and every name that's being lifted up to you today, Lord. We just bring them to you. Father, we pray for our country today. Lord, just so many things coast to coast that are going on throughout our country. And Father, we pray that your healing hand will be upon our country today. Father, be with our leaders. Be with those that uh, are, are making the hard decisions. Father, we pray that your hand will lead and your hand will guide our country, Heavenly Father. Father, I pray that you lift up your people today, Lord, to begin to be examples and to begin to pray for those that are in charge. And Lord, to make a stand for you today, Father. Just help us, Lord to spread your word, and to lift up others in prayer, Lord, today. Father, we do pray for our schools, all of our students, teachers, faculty, administrators, Lord, everyone that's involved in the education of our children, Lord, we just lift them up to you, ask for safety, ask for wisdom and knowledge, Lord. Father, we just pray, Lord, that those that know you would just be shining lights and examples to you, to those around them each and every, every day. Father, be with us as a church, Lord, we pray that you continue to give us wisdom and, and guidance as we look at, at reopening, Lord, as we uh, look at leaders, new leaders in the church, Lord, just be with us, help us, Father, point us in the right direction, let us hear your voice today, 
Be with us as we worship you this morning, Lord. Help us to understand who you are, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, they're still, they're still passing all of those out uh, this morning, so we may have to uh, change up the way we do a few things. But we're going to go ahead and get started with the message today. Uh, I'll be in two places this morning as we go through the message. I'll be in Exodus chapter 3, and then I'll also be in... Um, John chapter 8. We're going to start in John chapter 8, verse 58. It's where we're going to start. But for the next several weeks, I just want to give you an overview of what we're going to be doing for the next several weeks. For the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at who Jesus Christ is. Who is Jesus? A lot of people have an opinion. A lot of people may have an answer. A lot of people may not have a biblical answer. Uh, you'll, you'll hear a lot of things from he was a good teacher, he was, uh, he was a good moral person, he was, uh, you'll even hear he was crazy, he was a madman. You'll hear all these different things that Jesus Christ was or could have been. But what I want us to look and I want us to start understanding is who is Jesus? We cannot begin to share our faith. We cannot begin to understand our, our faith in God. We can't understand our Christianity unless we know who Jesus Christ is. And one of the best ways to know who Jesus Christ is is to understand who he said he was. And so for the next several weeks in the book of John, we're going to go through and we're going to look at all of these different statements on who Jesus said he was. We're going to look in his own words who Jesus Christ said he was. Not who I think he is, not who you think he is, but what the Bible says that Jesus Christ said about himself. Jesus Christ said, I am this, or I am that. Who is Jesus Christ? How can we learn who Jesus is? How can we understand who he is? And then through that understanding, we want to grow closer to Jesus Christ. We want to understand him better so that in our own personal life, he begins to make a difference in our life. We begin to follow him a little differently than we have before because we understand who he is. We understand who Jesus Christ is. And that is our goal for the next several weeks, is to look at this and understand when Jesus says, I am who he is. Understanding why we need to know who he is. John chapter 8, verse 58 that we're going to look at today, we're going to kind of start at the, uh, the, the greatest statement he made, and then we're going to look at the smaller statements he made. But today we have to start here and understand who he is before we look at all the other statements he said. In John chapter 8, beginning in verse 58, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So Jesus made this statement. He made this great statement that said, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So over the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at these two words very closely. I am. And this morning, in these verses, he didn't put anything after that. He just ended with a statement, I am. And if you notice in verse 59... The result of that wasn't very pleasant. The people, uh, the people said that uh, he, that they picked up stones and they wanted to begin to uh, stone him after that. So why would they say that? Why would they do that now? Why would they want to pick up these stones for one, two simple words? I am. And so that's what we want to look at this morning. We want to look at what is so powerful about the words I am. Am. And to do that, we need to kind of go back and ask yourself a question. Ask yourself this question. Have you ever had a yearning, a, a, a thought that makes you wonder in this life what life is all about and why life matters? Have you ever thought about that before? Have you ever sit down, you've had a bad day or maybe a good day, or, or you're sitting there and you're talking to someone, and you're wondering why in a way, what is life all about? Why do I exist? Why am I here? What's going on with life? At some point, every one of us, I believe, wonders if there is a God, and if there is a God, what does God want to do with me, or what does God have to do with me? Why does God want anything to do with my life? Have you ever wondered if God really knows you? 
Have you ever wondered if God really cares about you? These are the questions that we need to ask before we start looking at this. Does God care? Does God understand who I am? Does God know what I've been through? Have you ever wondered or have you ever wanted to know who God is? Have you ever wondered who God is? Well, Jesus, in John chapter 14, Jesus told Philip that he was the Father and that the Father was in, in him, was him. And if you want to know God, you need to know Jesus. And so what Jesus is telling us is he's telling us this. If you want to know God, the Father, know me. If you want to know God, the Father, know me. To know Jesus is to know God. To know Jesus Christ is to know God. To know him is for us to look at the Father and see a picture of the Father. And so as we look at these I am statements that Jesus made, as we begin to look at them, as we're going to get a good picture of who Jesus is. But we're also going to start understanding that Jesus was also God, and we're going to see God in Jesus, and we're going to see Jesus in God. But to understand why Jesus just simply told the people, before Abraham, I am we need to go all the way back to Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3, beginning in verse 13, we see God talking to Moses. Now, this is God talking to Moses, uh, and, and he comes down to Moses, and he's in a burning bush, and he's talking to Moses, and listen to this conversation in verse 13. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he says, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever." And this is my memorial to all generations. Did you catch what God said to Moses? God said to him, I am. That is my name. He says, that is my name. My name is simply, I am. What was God talking about when he says that? That sounds like a, a strange name that we would have here. You see, we see God revealing himself to Moses whenever he's talking to him in this burning bush. We see God revealing himself. He was in this bush that was being burned but not consumed. And from this burning bush, he talks to Moses. And he says, I've heard the cry of my people in Egypt. And I want you to go and tell the Pharaoh to release them. And I will be with you. You see, the good news is God heard the prayers of the Israelite people. And God heard what was going on. The bad news for Moses was he was telling Moses, I'm sending you. And so Moses began to make excuses. He was, he was concerned about what was going on. He protests, and he finds all sorts of reasons why, I can't, why he can't go. And he says, whom am I that I should approach Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He was saying, I'm not worthy enough. And God dismisses him and tells him these things. And then he says, but wait a second. What if I go to the people of Israel? What if I go to them? And they say, well, who's this God that sent you? And Jesus, or God gives him a simple answer. He says, if you go to them and they say, who sent me, tell them this. I am who I am. Tell them that I am has sent you to them. This is the first time we hear these words. To be in you, it may not sound like much. It may sound kind of funny when he says, I am who I am. But it means so much more than that. One of the literal translations can be, I will be there. Or, I will be that I will be. And so, we look at these words, and it tells us that God always has been. God always will be. God will always be there. He was basically looking at Moses, and he was saying this. 
I am all that you need. I am God. I will be there when you need me. I will be there when you go. Wherever you step your feet, I will be there. I am. I will be there. God is enough. I am all you need, he was saying. God gives us what we need when we are where God wants us, is what he was saying with that statement. I am God Almighty is who I am. God wants us to know that he is there for us. Not was there, or not going to be there. I am there for you because I am God. You see, God introduced himself to Moses by saying, I am. That is my name. I am. I am God. Now we jump forward a few thousand years, a couple thousand years maybe, and we see Jesus. And we see him talking to the Israelite people. And we see them going through here and we see them talking to Jesus. And we see him making this astonishing statement. He told them, before Abraham, I am. Now the people looked at Jesus and they wanted to stone him. Why? Because here's what Jesus was saying. I always have been. I always will be because I am God. That's what Jesus was saying to the Israelite people when he said that. You see, when the people of Israel heard the words, I am, or the translation of Yahweh, who has always been their God, he was the God of their forefathers. He was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was the one that would be their God for all eternity. And all of a sudden, here's Jesus Christ saying, I am that God. They looked at him and they said, that's blasphemy. This name is a holy name. This name is a sacred name. It's a name that is never spoken out loud in their language. Instead, they would speak out other words like Adonai or Lord. But with Christ's statement when he said that, he was saying, I am God. It's what Jesus was saying. He was saying, there is no one else. I am God. I am not a good teacher. I am not a good moral person. I am God. It's what he was saying to the people. And you see, Jesus Christ came and said, I am the only one. I am your father. Before Abraham was, I am. I am God. I am the deity in your life. And this is important for all of us to understand this. Not just for the Israelite people. They were so up in arms, they wanted to go out and they wanted to, to stone him right then and there. Why? Because Jesus was saying, I am God. They didn't understand who he was, they only understood who he said he was. And that's what's so important about this. You see, for you and I this morning to grow in our faith, for you and I this morning to grow in our walk toward God, we must understand who Jesus is. And we must begin by understanding that Jesus Christ is God. You see, our world has a distorted view of who Jesus Christ is. Our world has a distorted view of who God is. Our world has lost reverence. Unfortunately, many Christians, many people who have called upon the name of Jesus Christ have lost our reverence for Jesus and we've forgotten who he is. And we need to be reminded today that Jesus is God. He is the great I am. He is the one that was before all others. He was the one that was everything was created through him and by him and for him. As we've been reading in Colossians. Jesus Christ is the I am, and we need to understand that. We must study him. We must learn about him. We must understand that he is truly God, and we must change the way we look and the way we worship because of who he is today. And we haven't done that. We must learn for ourselves that Jesus is the great I am. We must learn for ourselves that he is God. We must learn that he is the one and the only one that can give us salvation. So why is it so important for us to understand that Jesus is God? It's important because there's four things that God wants from us, or wants to do with us. Four things. You see, when Jesus said, I am God, Jesus was telling us these things. Number one, Jesus was telling us that God wants to be known. 
God wants to be known. Have you ever thought about that before? God is not hiding. God is not hiding somewhere. God doesn't want to avoid us. God wants to be known. He wants to be known by us. Jesus was sitting there talking to the Israelite people and saying, I am, I am God. Why am I here? Because God wants to be known today. God does not want to be hidden. God does not want to hide from us. God wants to be known to us. He has created everything around us to reveal himself to us, and God wants to be known. Jesus says, I'm not some hidden character here. I'm not some hidden person. I am God, and I am here so that God can be known. God wants us to know him today. God has revealed himself to us over and over and over again. You go back to the beginning of time. Adam and Eve walked and talked with Jesus. Abraham was recognized by God. I mean, they walked and talked with God. Abraham was recognized by God. He was called by God. He made himself known to Abraham. God came to the prophets and spoke to them. And then God said, it's not enough. And God sent Jesus Christ, his only son, God in the flesh, to be born so that God could reveal himself to us through Jesus Christ. I am God, Jesus was saying. That's important because God is here in the flesh with you today is what he was saying. He wanted to be known by man, so he came so that he could be seen. He wanted man to know his love and his care for them, so he came so that he could be sacrificed. When Jesus said, I am, he was saying so much more than just, I am God. He was saying, I want to be known. I am revealing myself to you as who I am. I came so I can love you and so that I can sacrifice for you. People don't understand who God is. And Jesus says, I am here so you can understand who God is today. So as we study Jesus Christ, as we study him and we study what he said about himself, we are studying the very presence, the very character, the very attributes of God today. When you look and you pray and you talk to Jesus, you are talking to God. That is who Jesus is, and that's what he means when he says before Abraham, I am. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at all these statements that Jesus said. Jesus tells the people that I am the bread of life. He's going to tell them that I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. That's what Jesus told the Israelite people. But for us, here's what he's telling us today. When he says those things, he says, I am your bread of life. I am your light. I am your grace. I am your good shepherd. I am your resurrection in life. I am your way, your truth, and your life. And I am your true vine. That's what God is telling us today. That Jesus Christ came not just because he was God in the flesh, but he came so that we could have a personal relationship with him. So that we could know who he was. And so that we could get to know him personally. That's who Jesus Christ is. He is God. He is our bread of life. He is the one that came for all of us. And that's why we need to know him better. He wants us to know him. He wants us to have that personal relationship with him. He wants to be known. He wants to reveal himself to us. And he wants to call us all to him today. But unless you know and begin at the very beginning by understanding that Jesus Christ is God, the rest of these statements won't mean anything to you. They'll just be empty statements. But understand that when he says, I am your bread of life that we'll look at next week, he is saying this. He is saying that God is your bread of life. He's saying God is the one that will sustain you. So do you know who Jesus truly is? Do you understand that when he says, I am, He's saying, I am God. There is no difference between me and God is what he is saying. So as we study Jesus Christ over the next several weeks, the challenge is for you to get to know him better. The challenge is for you to build that personal relationship with him by understanding why he's here and who he is in his own words. So the first thing I ask that you do is I ask that you begin to clear your minds of anything you've heard about Jesus before. Begin to clear your minds of any notions the world may tell you about Jesus Christ. Begin to understand who he is 
according to the Bible, not according to man. Not according to what I say. Look at what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. Look at who the Bible says Jesus is. The next thing I, I want to challenge you to do is begin to share with others who Jesus is. People hear the name Jesus all the time, but people don't understand who Jesus really is. There are people who go to church every Sunday who have never understood who Jesus Christ truly is. Let's begin to let people know who Jesus truly is. Let's begin by letting people know right off the bat that Jesus is the great I am. What does that mean? That means that Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. You want to know God the Father? Know Jesus the Son. They are one and the same. Begin to share with others who Jesus truly is. And so this morning, as we come to a close, not only do we know who Jesus is now as far as the great I am, before Abraham, I am. Not only do we know that, but we need to begin to prepare ourselves to understand who else he is to us and why he came to earth. And to do that, we need to begin praying. We need to begin asking God for help. We need to begin asking him to help us understand who he is. We need to begin reading and understanding and looking in his word. We need to get rid of every other thought we had about God. And we need to understand how he wants to work in our lives today. And it all begins with us praying to him each and every day. So this morning, I want us to close in prayer. And as we close in prayer, I want us to pray for wisdom and guidance from God. I want us to pray for understanding. But I also want to pray for boldness. I want to pray for a boldness in our life. I want us to pray for a boldness that God, we will allow God to change us. And that we will accept whatever changes God has for us. That's a hard prayer. That's a hard prayer. As we begin to look at who Jesus Christ is, he's going to begin wanting to change our lives. The way we live, the things we do. He's going to begin to want to change us. One little step at a time. And it's hard for some of us to change that way. It's hard for us to accept his change. The people in Israel, because he said he was God, wanted to stone him. Well, today, most of the time, we just reject him. And so we're going to pray this morning that we'll not reject his changes, that we'll not reject his way, but that we will embrace the changes that he wants in our lives and that we will be bold and readily accept those changes and that we'll be obedient and change the way he wants. Do these things so that you can understand who Jesus is and what he wants for your life. And through him... The world can find salvation. Through him, we have salvation today. So join me in prayer this morning as we close. And let's pray a very specific prayer to God this morning that he will help us, that he will lead us and guide us toward a better relationship with him through an understanding of who he is today. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we come before you today, Lord, and we ask for your help. We ask that you help us understand who you are by understanding who Jesus Christ truly is. Lord, we ask that you help us understand that you are all we need. And Lord, that you are sufficient for every area of our life. Lord, help us to understand your holiness. Help us to have a reverence for you, Lord, that we have lost in our lives today. Father, help us grow closer to you in wisdom and knowledge every single day. Father, help us to be obedient to the changes that you want in our life. Help us, Lord, to go before you in boldness and ask you to change us, to open our hearts and our lives and our minds, Lord, and show us the changes that we need to make. Help us understand who you are. Help us to understand every purpose for our life through you, Lord, today. Father, help us every day to understand the love and the sacrifice that you made for us. And Father, help us to pass that love on to others. Lord, we come before you this morning knowing that we need a change in our lives. Knowing that we need to understand who you are. 
And Father, we come before you this morning asking that you start now by revealing yourselves to us in our lives and in our hearts. And Lord, give us the strength and the power to follow you wherever you may lead us and wherever you may guide us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Continue letting this be your prayer this week. Continue letting this be something that uh, you want in your life, a change you want in your life each and every day. Just a few announcements uh, this morning. All right, so uh, just real quick, Joe and Frank uh, are both going to be your uh, deacons for this, uh, for, for this term, so thank you for voting them in as deacons this term. And uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll get more information out about who the different deacon families are at that time. Got one more announcement. Hold on. And then at the reopening committee can meet real quickly over underneath the, uh, the steps here immediately following the service this morning uh, to look over the results of the survey. Uh, don't forget if you've got a box, you can pull over here and we can pick it up or you can go around the back and pick up an empty box. We have nine empty boxes. But let this be your prayer this week to know Jesus better, to know Jesus for who he truly is and know him better in your life this week. Everyone have a good week.